Hello and welcome to RTTV, brought to you in association with Chevron Global Lubricants. I'm Brian Weatherly and together with my co-host Andy Salter, we're going to bring you the very best of day two for the Birmingham Truck Show. And Andy being Andy, naturally he's got to arrive in his own <coughs> unique way. Uh, Andy, where on earth did you get that from? That's a bit of a tight fit in there, Brian. <laughs> Lent it off some finished chap. He's uh, he's given me for a quick spin around the block. Yeah, just the job. But yeah, back to the back to the job in hand. The truck show. What are we going to be doing today? Uh, we've got the new Hino 18 tonner to go and have a look at. Also going to go and talk to DAF about an environmental initiative that they're kicking off, uh, and then going to have a look around the stands to see what other people are doing environmentally. Environment is the name of the game here. Okay. Well, I'm going to be going to see the Renault stand for the new Magnum and the Lander. Let's hit the halls. Let's get cracking. A right riveting read, as they say. We'll be asking questions later on. As we've said, the environment is at the forefront of the Birmingham CV show this week. With all the major manufacturers and suppliers jostling for position to be more greener than you. I'm here with DAF Trucks Marketing Director Tony Payne, who's going to tell me that DAF, no doubt, are greener than everybody else. What about that, Tony? Well, I might do. They're, <laughs> they're pretty close to the top, I'd have to say. <laughs> so. DAF and the environment, it's, a, it's an initiative that you've kicked off, trying to demystify some of the issues. Give me a sort of quick whistle-stop tour of what you've been doing. It's essentially all about burning less diesel. Every time you burn a litre of diesel, you will produce 2.63 kilograms of CO2. Simple so as that. It's just as simple as that. Um, so it's all about making that litre of diesel work very hard and being absolutely productive. Better payload, better speeds, and most importantly, better fuel consumption. So if there was one thing that I could do in order to burn less diesel, what would that be? It's probably run it in a 44-ton truck, preferably a CF85 460, <laughs> which has proven to be the most productive truck of anything. I would expect no less. Absolutely. That's why DAF Trucks is number one in the marketplace. Of course, there are other people doing environmental initiatives at the show. So join me now as we go on a tour around the halls to see what else people are up to. It would be nice to think corporate responsibility was driving the environmental push, but increasingly it's legislation. The London Low Emission Zone, for example, has had a massive impact on the way that people are developing their technologies. Eminox, where we are now, they're one of the leaders in exhaust technology, and they've got a big presence at the stand. But there's also another company that wants us to take a look at. Clean Diesel Technologies. They're a relatively relative newcomer to the scene, but they're making a big impact. They've got a fuel-borne catalyst combined with an exhaust system that really does clean up the air. It hits the low emission zone and it's making a big impact on the air we breathe in our cities. Onwards. As Tony Payne at DAF Trucks has already told us, saving the planet for the road transport industry is all about burning less diesel. There's a direct correlation to CO2 emissions. Freight Best Practice is the government-backed initiative that's all aimed at giving you the information that you require to reduce both your fuel bill but also the impact on the planet. There's a series of guides, there's a website with all the information that you require, as well as a stickers and really all the tools that you need to help improve your bottom line and reduce your environmental impact. Try it. It's not just the truck manufacturers that are focused on reducing their environmental impact. The trailer and bodybuilders are equally at work in this area. Cartwright, for example, one of the UK's leading trailer and bodybuilders, launched an initiative called Cheetah. That's an aerodynamic package that works to reduce your fuel use and your CO2 emissions, and that's good for the planet. Staying on the green theme, there was a real plethora of vehicles on the Smith electric vehicle stand. From panel vans, car derived vans, the Smith Newton, based on the Arvia chassis cab, now available at up to 10 or 12 tonnes. And the very latest Smith Electric Vehicles Faraday 2, which will be launched in North America shortly. 17 years ago, a legend was born. The legend, the Renault Magnum, a truck like no other. And it's endured and endured and endured. How they managed to keep it up to date? Constant upgrades most recently with the addition of a Volvo-based driveline. The latest version of the Magnum, however, has got even better. And let's take a look inside, and you'll see exactly what I mean. And here we are inside the new Magnum. The first thing you notice is the increased headroom. Why? Because they've raised the roof 
by 20 centimetres and that gives you an unrestricted walk around height of two metres. At the front end, major reworking of the storage lockers. New bins, really solid build quality. This year's must have roller shutters. Up here, an aircraft style locker as well. Great for bags and other kit. Pushes neatly out the way. What we've also got here is the classic single bunk. But Magnum now comes with all the options of multi-pass, where you can convert the bottom bunk into a table and two chairs. So this isn't just a machine for driving and sleeping in, it's one for living in too. And for long haul drivers making long trips across the continent, this is a machine that you can spend a lot of time in, in great comfort. In addition to the new Magnum on the Renault stand, there's also this beast, the new Lander 8-wheeler. And we'll tell you a little bit about that in just a moment. But right now, I'm joined by Heinz Lowe, Senior Hello. Vice President for Renault Trucks Europe. You've got a lovely truck out there in the Magnum, 17 years old. Can you sustain that individual character within the wider Volvo Renault Mac group? We are totally convinced about that. As you can see, the new Magnum is just answering the demand of the drivers, of the customers. Uh, the roominess and the space in the cab is much better than before, so we are quite confident. Well, you said the word confidence. There seems to be a new confidence in the Renault Group, particularly in things like build quality, presentation, the dealer network. What's behind that? Let's say we have carefully listened to the customers, what did they demand, and we have done our homework. So quality, efficiency is now really, you can, you can perceive it, you can touch it, so we are really positive about the future. Also on the Renault stand, was the brand new Renault Lander eight-wheeler. The lightweight eight-wheeler for aggregate and mixer work that sits below the bulletproof Kerax. You can get it with 370, 410 horsepower engines or with a three-step cab here, a 450. It's two years since Hino emerged as a serious player for the UK market. And in that time, it's launched a product, eight-wheeler, six-wheeler and tractor unit range. It's got, now got a dealer network in place and it now commands over 18% of the UK 8x4 market. It's really a company going places. Last year, we got a sneak preview of the new little one, the 300 series. This covers 5 to 12 tonnes. Lovely little urban vehicle. Launched now fully to the market in January, looks like being a serious player in this lightweight sector. An extension to the 300 series range is the new hybrid, the Dutro. It uses a four cylinder diesel engine with a 36 kilowatt electric motor. That's going to reduce fuel usage and your CO2 emissions. But that's not all. The latest piece in the Hino Jigsaw is the 500 series, seen here at Birmingham as an 18-tonner. We also understand that there's a 7.5-tonner using the same cab due to be launched next year. Hino certainly one to watch. You're watching Road Transport TV in association with Chevron Global Lubricants. As promised, Road Transport TV brings you the top interviews. I've got Teresa Villiers, she's Shadow Secretary of State for Transport. Teresa, you've got a visit here this morning at the show. What are your first impressions? Well, I'm very impressed. We've got a really excellent range of exhibitors. And I'm here to find out about the advances in technology that we're seeing in the logistics and haulage business particularly interested in improvements in environmental performance, security arrangements, also a big issue for the haulage industry with the increase in truck crime that we've seen recently. Sure. And um, also, I, I feel it's very interesting, important to talk to the people involved in the industry about the current economic situation, how it's impacted. Sure, we, uh, we spoke to Jim Fitzpatrick yesterday, Minister for Transport, as I'm, I'm sure you're aware of. Um, he was uh, non-committal when it comes to fuel duty, and um, but very keen to push the, the recent announcement um, tightening up on foreign vehicles. Um, what's your current thoughts in terms of policy, and what are you expecting operators to say to you today about the state of the road transport industry in the UK? Well, I think it, it's clear to me that um, the road transport industry is, is feeling the pinch, the current economic conditions do um, cause problems for them, and also the competitive disadvantage 
that they face with other European operators is, is considerable. I mean, as, as we've discussed before, I, I can't make sort of easy promises on fuel duty. I wish I could, but I'm not in a position to do that. But um, the Conservative Party very much is concerned about this issue of competitive disadvantage. We're looking at all sorts of ways to try and do something to remedy that. Um, it is important to crack down on foreign truckers who are unroadworthy. It is important to find a way to make sure foreign truckers pay their share of tax to the Exchequer. Um, it's also, I think, critically important that we get um, an even enforcement of EU regulations. It seems to me that often in this country there's a real crackdown and an over-implementation compared to um, other countries that don't take nearly so much of an interest and, and let, um, let their hauliers get away with, um, with not complying with the standards and that's, that's another way in which our operators are operating with one hand tied behind their back. Wonderful. Thank you, Theresa. Enjoy the rest of the show. So there you have it. Cr crackdown on competition, improving the competitive position for road transport operators in the UK, but sadly no commitment to a reduction in fuel duty. Here on the MAN stand there's history writ large with the very first diesel engine developed by the man who gave his name to the diesel engine, Dr. Rudolf Diesel. It's from 1897. But from one old banger, now to a new big banger, the D26 Euro 5 twin turbo EGR engine. But we've not come onto the MAN stand just to see products. I'm here to talk to Dave Cousins from MAN, in particular to find out how the dealer network for MAN is now firing on all cylinders. Dave. Well, Brian, good morning. Um, we're in our third year now of our uptime principle, this campaign uh, to focus our dealers on the only things customers care about, things like MOT pass rates, PMI slippage, breakdown performance, parts availability, and the simple job of reducing VOR and giving customers uptime. Now, in particular, I understand you've had some spectacular improvements on MOT first-time pass rates through the dealer network. Absolutely. Our network is presenting around 17,000 vehicles a year for test and we're now running at 87% first time pass on all those vehicles and very proud of it. Now, I understand you're holding in your hands now quite a useful publication. It's, it's the Uptime Principle Supplement produced with Commercial Motor. Tell us a little bit about that. That's right. You'll find this as a supplement in Commercial Motor this week and this goes into great detail to explain uh, what I've briefly talked to you about today. Visitors to roadtransport.com will have probably already noticed that we've hosted the Coolant Challenge on the website during the Road Transport television show. I've got John Jackson, he's a National Sales Distribution Manager for Chevron Global Lubricants with me. And he's going to tell us a little bit about coolants, because I'm not quite aware that Chevron was really into this coolant business. John, what's the story here? Um, Sexico have been at the forefront of producing coolants for some considerable years now. Um, and we recognise the importance, uh, especially based on the fact that some 60% of um, vehicle breakdown can be attributed to coolant well, problems. That much, right. Indeed, yes. And, uh, and so the coolant challenge is about ensuring that people are using the right coolant and making sure that they're topping up effectively. Yeah, the right coolant topping up, and interestingly, uh, a lot of OEMs obviously use the right coolant when they're actually manufacturing the trucks in the first place. Then when it comes out to the marketplace, people are removing that coolant and maybe putting in inferior products or indeed product that isn't suitable at all. Right, and a bit closer to home then around lubricants. Tell me what's going on there. We spoke to Alan Outhwaite about the Group 2 base oils. Tell me a little bit about what's going on in terms of the product development and what it's going to mean to operators in the future. Is Chevron are bringing in Group 2 um, products, which is um, uh, equivalent, if you like, to, to Group 3 products. It's more cost effective. And we're bringing in a range of uh, two new grades, Ursa Ultra, um, 10W30 and 15W40 to meet the upcoming E9 specification and we believe that we can produce a product that's um, exp um, exceedingly good value in terms of both the, um, the cost of the product and also the performance. Excellent. Thanks John. Andy, end of day two, you're looking just a little bit frazzled there. <laughs> a bit like this old timer here. <laughs> but have no fear, good soak in the bath and I'll be back like a spring chicken tomorrow. Excellent. Well, I look forward to it. So Andy and I will be with you tomorrow for the final day three of the CV show on RTTV in association with Chevron Global Lubricants.